It is Saturday the 9th of July 2022 and this is the Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey everybody, uh, this is Adrian and uh, it's, a, it's another two for this week. So with me is Jeremiah. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. Um, uh, Chris is uh, basically pushing forward some heavy Wi-Fi at a abbey. Today. Yeah, that's a really interesting. So that sounds like a quite a, uh, a challenging project. So for for regular listeners to this and other Chris Marquardt podcasts, um, you know, uh, many of you might have heard that he does an annual workshop at a, an abbey in southern Germany, which um, a week long sort of large format photography workshop where she just come back and, and figure out how to Wi-Fi up the whole place which as a bit of technical consulting sounds like quite good fun and also quite challenging <laughs> and quite expensive. I can so imagine he, need, it will he needs to rally the community. And I think that's what he's doing. Ah, I see. Well, okay. So, well, let's, so hopefully um, uh, Chris will be back with us next week, but this week he has to work, unfortunately. Um, but uh, the, the uh, we're going to try something a little bit different this week um, because uh, we're going to have a, impromptu creative conversation uh and this is pro uh this is uh based on a question actually or, or came about because of a question for, from one of our listeners andrew rock um who uh pinged me the other day uh in our discord and said i'd be really interested in getting a copy of your <coughs> zine agent but please can i have a digital copy and i have to admit it sent me into a bit of a creative dilemma rabbit hole flat spin panic <laughs> I understand. I understand why, because sending a PDF, if you wanted it to be a screen experience, it's very easy just to put it up on a screen, and there are many um, very very effective, um, I guess, software landing sites like Issue I S S U that are kind of aggregators of these kinds of zines and publications. Also, you know, you could do it any which way, which we'll talk about in the, in the podcast. But, but because you did not want to do that, you wanted it to be a printed magazine. The life of it is a printed magazine. And I, I also have a, um, an interesting kind of very, very, um, I think appropriate discussion, um, and I'll, I'll just kind of set it up for you to, to, to take the stage. Uh, yesterday, I had a, a, a studio visit from a uh, gallerist who was familiar with my work from my website, um, but she came to the studio and I took her through all of my prints, which are very, very uh, specific, and I've talked about this before on the podcast. They're printed piezo, very specially. And she said, I had no idea. The experience was so different for her that she said, and I quote, oh, now I really get it, that the object print is really the work and that the image on the screen is a representation of said work uh, designed to kind of put you into the experience of the image, but not necessarily the object or the tactile aspect of it. And so I'm with you. No, you want a copy? He should have a paper copy. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not that harsh. I'm not, I'm not, that harsh, <laughs> I am. but, but I tell you what though, that it did, um, it did genuinely make me ponder because I found, and we were just, you know, pinging messages, chatting online, you know, and I found myself really reluctant and I thought, why am I so reluctant? Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, and and just just to get it out of the way, right? It is not because I'm worried about there being you know um, unauthorized copies electronic of copies of my zine. Hundreds of thousands out. of yeah. people reading it without payment. Yeah, that that is absolutely <laughs> not where this is coming from at all. And but but even but knowing that, I was like, well, why am I reluctant? And it and and I think I figured it out. I figured it in the sense that the the thing that I'm reluctant about is that I've so many of the decisions that went into producing that zine are based around actually you know, the the medium in which it's presented. So it's things like 
yeah, and you've got your copy, which is great. I'm really glad you've got your physical copy because that makes it makes this conversation so much easier. But the you know the, there's the uh, the there's the the layout okay but and or even to, let's start with the basics there's the shape the physical shape of it it is an a5 book uh, and so you know the layout of the the, the spreads is all to do with you know, or, or shaped for that um the the paper i chose uh you know which was deliberately you know as close to your, your old-fashioned photocopier paper as you could get because it was supposed to be a zine right with a with, with yeah. a fairly rough and ready you know um feeling to it so i so how is any of that going to come across if i just send andrew this P, a pdf of the zine it does it doesn't make any sense so i said to him do you know what i'll i'll get back to you um, and I've been pondering this now for a good few days, and and I just pinged him just before we we, we you and I joined the, this recording to say heads up, we're just going to do a live you know creative response. <laughs> no, we don't know what the answer is here, but yeah, you, know, you might want to listen to the podcast when it comes out next week. But the so this so uh, I think that the thing that I'm pondering now, my first thought right was okay, I need to do something different. It needs to be presented a built from the ground up and presented for digital way and i just thought the first thought i thought was well i could make this really different by just let's let's sort of you know pixelate or or turn into a sort of eight bit you know aesthetic the front the front cover right and and just you know maybe change the font a little bit and stuff like sure. that just so that there's you know just so there's a uh, an acknowledgement right up front on whatever the the first impression is that this is the digital version it's probably pretty cheesy uh the whole 8-bit graphic thing you know or the <clears throat> return of the 8-bit graphic has been going on for a good couple of years now and uh you know, I'm not sure, but but at least it would make a statement. But I'm sure we can do better than that because there's layout and there's you know there, there's all sorts of stuff. So I, I guess, um, and I, I don't I don't want to to have a uh, yeah to to make it a gallery either on a website because it's supposed to be a, a single coherent thing. So I, I'm a I'm a bit um, flummoxed, I have to say. Um, I, I yeah. Uh, wait, t- t- tell me, Jeremiah, what's I mean, you you have a you have a website, right? So, and you put selections carefully chosen selections of your work on your website. But as you say yourself, as you just said, it's not the real thing, is it? No, I, you know. Again, I'm always drawn to the McLuhan-esque, Marshall McLuhan-esque um, way of of kind of interpreting media. Uh, you know, the message is the medium, right? And so there is something about, yes, there's a constraint of our screens, whether it's 16 by 9 or 9 by 16, um, whether we have a 4 HD, 4K HDR or 6K HDR screen that's vivid or, you know, an old ratty, you know, very, very um, 1080p, 720 with the same experience of a site or an image on it, uh, there are constraints technically. Ditto on a book, there's constraints A5. So you need A5, you need, you need to know how, how it's going to come together because there are limitations of paper printing, all of those things. And if you're sending them out, there's limitations of weight and binding. All of those things I always feel are creative constraints which um, energize the process of the layout or the design of it. And the design of it is to have an impact in your hand as a scene. Whether it's a, quote, throwaway or whether it's a precious art book, those are also very, very different. Um, you know, recently, if I'm, I tend to read the newspaper online. Um, and uh, but yet on Sundays I do get the New York Times delivered, and there is something ritualized about sitting with the paper and turning the pages. And I find that the New York Times that on a Sunday the weight of it is probably part of the the tactile impression, I guess, as well. It is. It, it, I've been doing it for you know as far as back as I can remember, and there's something calming about it, even with the <laughs> the news. Um, but but what's <laughs> what's interesting is um, the New York Times, I'll read with the editorial, and this, this is very relevant to your layout. 
you look at the New York Times, or a better example is the Washington Post, which is the other newspaper that I, I, I uh, read. You look at it online and there is the editorial content of how these stories are placed, how you manage, um, how it captures your eye and leads you from one story to another. But they also have a button online that says the e-newspaper as it does the LA Times. When you go to it, it's a basically a digitized version of the paper as it looks like. And okay, so it's laid out. out and stuff. Okay. It looks like a photograph of the New York Times or the Washington Post. Yeah. And as you turn the page, it actually curls over mm. and and turns the page. And it also mm. has all of the advertising in it. Oh, okay. All, That's all of those things uh, are there. And so the experience of reading headlines and layouts are very, very different of what catches your eye, what draws you to it. If you click on a story, it goes into the electronic version. And so you can read it uh, like that. Uh, and then you finish it and you go back to the page turn of it. So that, that, and, that yes, I maybe have a bit more sympathy for that. Do you know, I've never minded seeing ad advertisements in print. Right. In fact, actually, um, uh, I, I used to ignore them. And then one time, actually quite a long time ago now, a colleague of mine at the time said, no, I really like looking at the advertisements. You can learn a lot from who's advertising, what they're sure. trying to say. You, you don't it's, you don't have to you don't have to consume an advert as if you were a consumer. You can you can read an advert and, and, and analyze it. Right. And, and oh, you can make your own. Very well. He was, very well. He was, a lot, he was a lot cleverer than I was. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, by the way, to wit, one of the reasons that I do get the New York Times delivered is I read the book section, which okay. comes as sort of a mini, you know, a printed magazine on newsprint, though. Mm -hmm. Part of the experience, the, the copy, both electronically and in print, are the same in terms of the book reviews and all of those things. But I so much prefer reading the magazine because to read the advertisements that are from publishers of what books are coming out, what imprints they have collectively, um, are something you don't get electronically. Mm. So there is, there's a difference. And uh, I enjoy that just as when I was a, you know, a, a a kind of a, a newbie photographer. I used to love buying photo magazines. I read them as much for the advertising as I did for the content. Because ah. I was interested, oh, look at that cool lens or that cool camera. Oh, wow. wow, objects yeah. of desire. Yeah, but yeah. in experiencing images, which is really what we're talking about, there is significant differences emotionally between seeing an image on a screen, seeing an image on a phone, mm -hmm. seeing an image uh, printed as a fine art print, seeing an image as a snapshot, seeing an image in a kind of uh, rough and ready zine that is just meant for page turns. And the and I I'm always have been curious about same image, but it provokes a very different response. Obviously, for you in creating the zine, you wanted it to feel different. That's what we had talked about, getting something out there in the yeah, physical yeah. world, a tactile piece of work that, that by holding, touching, looking, turning the page at your own pace, um, handing it off to someone, sharing it, that's a very different experience from just looking at the content on a screen it um, is it is it's and and some of the feedback i've had from people who've received it um has been really interesting you know the some you know uh, at least one person has said oh i really like your choice of paper and i was like okay all right thanks that that was a part of the process that was good <laughs> somebody else said some of those spreads 
I'm finding them really disturbing and I don't know <laughs> why. And and I said, OK, that's good. I, I said, you know, I, I did say, you know, I can tell you the thinking behind them if that. It, but but if you'd like to you know, sweat it out a little longer, <laughs> but please do. So so you have all of these different levels of appreciation. And, I, and I'd like to be able to get some of that into a in digital format. It fe- I do feel, though, that it, the digital format is probably going to be weaker and i don't know how to make it strong i think it would be what i would call a reasonable facsimile of the zine in other words it will represent the zine but it is not the zine and Mm. i think if you took this into issue for example just because i mentioned it before Mm -hmm. you would have the same page turning effect the same you know it would be the book within the screen so you can you can actually see what it could be but it's very different than sitting outside with a in in full sun very very different yes than with your glary you know ipod ipad um you know the brighter the sun the better <laughs> the clarity of the, of the uh image unlike you know exterior experience uh, of screen imagery in bright sun it's you know you well, just so can't that's, compare, a, that's right? a really good point because and you know it's we we live in a world where you know if you're using instagram or similar you're scrolling past things and the pictures that you linger on for more than half a second are the ones that really jump out of the screen at you they're the ones with the super saturated colors and uh and the, the you know as much dynamic range as people can squeeze in and uh, uh yeah so 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 it's, it, the different things catch your eye don't they it is yeah it's 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 very different uh, you know it's what we you know there's a difference between studying a book in a library and a beach read <laughs> you know what yes. i mean i wonder uh, i wonder if a, con- a a digital contact sheet might work I wonder, um, just, even if even if it's just as a sort of table of content sort of thing to help you navigate around a, a, an electronic file. I wonder if you mean if some, you, so, something that looked like that. Uh, well, yes. So, uh, yeah, for the I mean, for the benefit of, of the listeners, uh, that's a, a six by four print. Yeah, uh, which is of multiple eight, eight, images. It, eight little images yeah. on it. So I wonder if the I wonder if they could, I could I could create because I'd want it to be you know I'd want the digital version to be distributable in some way right um uh but but also navigable and just scrolling seems to me to be a here's sub, an idea a subpar experience here's an idea I'll go for it I need ideas um maybe the way to do it is to send a file that needs to be printed and assembled like 3D <laughs> printing models. In other words, the same format that you would send to the publisher, which is, you know, where the splits are and the, yeah, yeah, you know, with the, all the pagination, and stuff like that. Yep. All of that with a set of instructions so that they get it. They print it. If they only have a small printer, it'll come out small, but that's okay too. A bigger one would be bigger. And follow the instructions and assemble your own zine at home or bring it to a little, you know, print shop down the corner and and have them do it. But, you know, staple binding, whatever it is, uh, that could be a very interesting compromise of, of kind of staying true to the intention of what you wanted and yet distributing it electronically. That's, that, that's right. Really, that's interesting. So, so for people who only wanted a digital copy, yeah, they they could accept that for what it was, right? So, so you could argue then that distributing it in that format is that those people that have offered to take, uh, you know, essentially um, decided that they would prefer to take the product part way through the workflow, rather rather than at the end of the workflow. That yeah, they, DIY, but, they, but they should, but but that they could get the they they could get the output at the particular stage of the workflow. So as you say, the you know the the PDF with all the markup <coughs> that you send to the printer could be the the digital output. That's an inter- That is an interesting idea. I quite like that. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, just made that up. But but I think that that a there's irony in 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 it. 
right? Yes. In other words, you go, yeah, no problem. <laughs> but, with, but the set of instructions, and I'm willing to believe that people who are really interested would do it because they go, well, what, why does he want me to experience this on paper? Only through printing it will I find out. And yeah, I can look. I can look at what it is. <laughs> it is. Ve- it is a very intriguing idea. I quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> let me. Let me. Th- let me think on that because I've now got a mental image of the file, of course, that I did send to the printer. And actually, they th- this particular printer has a really simple process. What they do is they say set up your spreads with the with the right margins and bleed, um, and then just um, send us the PDF of those as single pages. So mm-hmm. the so the the picture that you 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 paint in my mind is is of something that has all the markings for the yeah. machines to cut and things like that yeah. as you as you would do in a in a in a print process. Um, the, 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 those are not visible in my zine because the whole thing has been designed to be graphic from side to side, right in front to back. Right. So the 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 style that I laid it out in was was full bleed on every single spread. Um, so but it's still it's it's interesting because it was a really it was a really uh, discombobulating experience having worked in the spreads and having developed the spreads as the thing to then have to produce a pdf for the print process that just cut those spreads into single pages and scroll through them in a vertical fashion it's like that's not the thing I just made. That re- that no. really isn't the thing I just made. But I mean, of course, it was. It was just part of getting it ready for print. It's the same as doing. I don't know if you're doing printing a single photograph and you happen to do soft proofing. It's that kind of process. You can look at sure. your soft proof on the screen and you can say that's not the thing I made. But actually, of course, it is because it's part of the workflow. So that's, that's yeah. really interesting. I like that. That's a good idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that write that one down. So you don't forget. Yeah, the print PDF. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. I, so, yeah, so I, what, what about I think uh, honoring the the experience of the medium is extremely important. Like I respond to um, tin types. Like right. I I would love to be able to make them. I don't know how to. Um, I'm much too paranoid about toxic. <laughs> <laughs> and all the rest of it. But there is something so magic when I look at a tintype, you know, especially those working in a modern way, doing portraiture or whatnot, using those old techniques. It, it just feels so powerful, you know, warts and all on that. All, all of the kind of idiosyncrasies of the medium come forth. Um but I love the object of it. It wouldn't look the same printed on paper than it does on metal. Um, mm. And I, you know, I, I, the show that I, I saw, I saw a photo show yesterday, very, very impressive. And these were printed uh, on a, I guess, digital C prints. Um, right, okay. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're, you know, the images are digital digital files, but they're, effectively burned on to a, you know, I think Fuji had done one, uh, and then there was another one. Uh, there were two different uh, processes, but they, they end up and they're archivally processed through the chemistry. And they, you know, they, they, they look like glossy, beautiful color prints. They're not quite cibachromes, but they are absolutely beautiful. Um, they would be different looking at it on a screen. I'd appreciate them on a screen as images, but seeing them as print objects, they were more powerful. Yeah. Um, why that is, I don't know. But I do know how I feel about responding to an image. Also, there are some images that I feel work tremendously on a, on a screen. Uh, but a screen um, demands us to be into a relationship with said screen. So the, there's that. In other words, I'm looking at a screen. I need to be at my desk. I need to be on my iPad. I need to give it a certain kind of attention. There is a dynamic uh, between 
the kind of material object in one's hand and the experience of electronics beaming towards you. One, of course, says reflected light. One is directional kind of yeah. light. And, mm. and I think that provokes a different emotional experience. I, I, yeah, I, I see. I see what you mean. Yes, I, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? And and just thinking, building on what you just said, that I, I just an idea that sprung to mind was, you know, part of the experience is is the, is the slowness of it. Uh, you know, and Italians appreciate it. So, yeah, you know, how do you build slowness into digital? I mean, I guess I could I could make a video version of my zine and just make it linger on spread uh, for an uncomfortably long time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, could, that, but, but it could could do that because you know, you could say, okay, well, each here's here's the zine, and the you know each spread is going to be displayed in the in a video for thirty seconds or something like that, just to make it so that people, people uh, actually spend an element of time. Uh, see, I don't think that works because I think when we're at a screen, we are so hyperkinetic and we want. Whereas I think if we're looking at a let's call it a photo book. I personally will take my time in studying the images. That's a really images. good point. That's a really good point. Cause what I, um, is it the, in thinking about that, I'm trying to force the, the, the real world experience into the digital medium, which is, I don't think which is always going to be suboptimal. It's, you know, it, it, is it that I should lean into the digital experience in some way? Because the, I've got lots of the, there's ideas flashing through my head at the moment. For some reason, right, I have two 1960s TV programs in my head right now. Um, so uh, one of them uh, is called or was called The Invaders which was a series that went on for forever. Um, it, play, it replayed when I was a kid uh, and used to watch it. Um, and they, they in, in that classic 1960s way, they always had like an uh, you know, um, a, a intermissions, almost it's like you had a, a prologue, act one, act two, act three, an epilogue, right? Which presumably <laughs> coincided with ad breaks, right? Uh, uh, but but yeah. it was very, it was signposted. There would be a graphical intermission that said, you know, act two or stuff like that. So I was thinking, I'm wondering if there's something like that. And the other one that springs to mind, and I have no idea why, um, is the original uh, Adam West TV series of Batman. Uh, and they always used to have you remember they have pop like the, graphics, the, the ow, spinning. Well, ow, there's there's yeah. that, but they also used to have there's an intermission. There's sort of there's a spinning bat logo, didn't they? And and some yeah. music and stuff like yeah. that. I, I wonder, yeah, for some reason those two things. I can sing it if if anybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. Yeah. Anyway, oh yes. Absolutely. The where there's possibly one of the most well-known songs in the world. <laughs> I guess. Um, so it's just just lots of ideas going through through my head. Um, I, I don't know that any of them are things that I could make work, but it just, I don't know, it's just the things that I want to, to think about. I'd like to make it a really good digital experience. And and I'm not sure, I think it's, it's almost a project in its own right, right? Well, there is another way to do it, and that's to send it out as a, um, I, I would call it an animated or a, a yeah, uh, an animated video so that the storytelling, as it were, the images, some images would linger, some of them would be very quick, and you would kind of create that experience of, but it would be how you wanted it um, to be seen or experienced rather than the, the viewer. In other words, some people are going to be captivated by, you know, a close-up of a cat, uh, another one just in the, you know, like, it, it really depends. But if you, if you said, oh, yeah, look at this for three or four seconds, and then these two images are going to fly by impressionistically, and then you're... Mm, that's here. really nice, yeah. So that, uh, it wouldn't be what the zine is but it would be yet another way of experiencing um i guess the entirety of the of the you know the collection yes yeah so yeah that's 
that's interesting well, i wonder if what would happen if i put them into the photos app on my phone in, a, in an album on their own and got it to do you know like the memories yeah. videos or something that, that's really it i mean that's what i'm talking about yeah yeah and, and you could narr- you could narrate it if you wanted i can um yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I would probably end up building it from scratch just because, yeah, just for the yeah. fun of it, you know. But um, I mean, you, you could use sound effects from the kids, laughter, you know, craziness. Sound, just, sound is an interesting one. No, that yeah, because, a, I hadn't because, thought about adding sound to it. See, I'm getting then, a good li- See, this is a good conversation because I'm like, I, I've got, I'm writing a list of things. I, I'm, I'm a giving life. man. I, I give and I give. This is not just um, um, Am I going to have to give you a credit now? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, of course, no. It's <laughs> um, right. I'm happy um, to. No, I, this, is, this is this is a, I, this is now a creative collaboration, isn't it? So I'm, I'm happy to credit everybody. I'm just involved. giving you d- different approaches to use the <laughs> technology which you understand in to interpreting the same images in a different way. And, you know, and there is, you know, I think as a good experiment is to take the zine, do a PDF of it, like an exact PDF of it, Mm -hmm. do the DIY print at home version of that, you know, as we discussed, yeah, do do a animated or, you know, a, a, a video memory style work that adds sound effects and just send them randomly along with the zine to a few people and ask them how the experience of seeing these same images differs or is the same. Mm. I think you'd learn a lot. That's I'd be very curious to know what people if there's a common thread to responses or it's completely subjective. That's an interesting thought as well, isn't it? Because the that and that really works well with like one of the concepts in the zine, which is the concept of providing feedback. Mm. Uh, because as as it says inside the back cover, you know, I'm doing this yeah. in part because I'd like some feedback. So it, same it, QR uh, code at the end. Yeah, yeah, there it. Yeah, there is. Yeah, ah, that's a good idea too. Because then it's an experience of process that you know goes out to the viewers and 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 you know your particular fans and um, and you go like look at all these four or five different approaches. You know, and you can even put them up on a on a purpose built website so that they they go to a site they have to scroll through each picture it's not a zine yet it's a gallery as it were yes right um but all of those you know i i would be very curious to see if for example in on the website the images would feel quote more like singular pieces of art with very deliberate intention Hmm. whereas the animation would be more experiential, like a memory with sound and music. Um, The book, which would feel more like, um, you know, you go to the theater, they give you a playbill. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's sort of a token, Mm -hmm. and and you you hold it, you keep it, or you toss it, whatever. Um, It deepens the experience, maybe, for some. But I think having that kind of feedback, you know, even with a checklist, which, you know, name your one, two, three, four, five best experiences. What is it about it that you liked? In other words, you could lead people through the uh, feedback loop. Yes. That were, yeah, a structure, structured feedback. Yeah, structured, which would be yeah. useful, yes. Especially, you know, uh, you know, you click on your QR code with your phone and that brings up a little you know, a little page and you, you check some, you type in a few beats and comments and through that you're able to process um, a whole manner of, of effective feedback or not. But I think that uh, it, it, it becomes a very interesting experiment in um, how an audience, how a viewer, how an art appreciator, photographer, whatever experiences your images, same images in different ways, and and that'll teach you about what images that you may thought, oh, this is just a throwaway image, just sort of fun, 
but set on its own may go, wow, this is very, very beautiful and deliberate. Um, Interesting. You know, uh, Interesting. So. And, uh, and on that note, because um, uh, I'm really tight for time today, uh, I'm going to have to like take my new little list of ideas. And thank you very much. For, <laughs> thank you very much for the conversation. But I am, I'm going to have to close the conversation there as much as I'd love to continue it because I am very tight for time today. Um, so uh, lots of things to think about though which is great and I shall I shall uh, make sure that we update everybody uh, on, on where, where this project goes next this is fun right this is fun good <laughs> cue, the, cue the music and we'll see you all next week <laughs> yeah take care everybody <laughs> cheers bye 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 You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs>